Hello, this is Tom Walla, and we are going to do today circular statistics. Uh, this screencast is specifically uh, to be done after you've read about what circular statistics are and um, how we're going to use them in class. Um, the first thing, I guess I'll show you a little bit about how they work. Uh, the, the unit circle here is how this works. What we're looking for, we'll like have some data that's collected that looks like this. Um, this might be north. Uh, that also might be noon, might be something else. You get these data points stacked out here that look like this. These are observations. These might be observations to the direction of an ant nest. Um, but essentially, we're going to find out that we're trying to calculate two things. This vector that's here, this arrow that I've drawn, uh, represents um, the mean. We have two things that it shows us is the mean angle. And that's going to be written as theta in what we're doing today. And that is, on average, all these data points that we collected, what degrees are they? So we got 90 degrees over here. we got 180 degrees over here. Um, and, you know, we've got 270 over there. And 1 and 360 sit next to each other up here, right? And that's why we have to do this special kind of math. The other thing that we're after is the length of the vector itself. So this vector... Um, if all the points are on one side of the circle, the vector um, will be longer, and it can have, uh, if everything is stacked on one point, it will go all the way to the end of the unit circle, and its length will be 1. So it could be 1. Um, if all the points are scattered around all around the circle, it could be really short, and would be somewhere down in here at the bottom, be close to 0. So that is called the R, the R so I put it like this which is the r equals length of vector. Um, there we go. So the mean angle, and we're looking for the r, which is the length of the vector. So let's dig in and, and have a look over here, because there's a lot of math, but this is made so you can do it in Excel. Um, I don't really know anywhere else you can get this sort of analysis. Uh, let's take a look at where we begin here. There we are, right there. This is all the work we're going to do. It's not that much, really. Uh, the goal here, remember, is to solve for r, the vector length. Um, I'm going to draw in pink. So I'm going to say we're going to look for r here. And we're also going to look for theta, which I've written before. And uh, the big answer to our questions is right here. There's one of the answers. And at the bottom, and the other is uh, this R right here. This is R. So those are the two answers we're looking for. Uh, I always like to read the last chapter of the book first. <laughs> there it is. Um, now there's some tricks. Excel doesn't do trig functions in degrees. It does it all radians. So here's our original data is going to be here. So this is what our data looks like when we start. And this is, you know, what have we got? Eight different observations of some degrees. I'm going to move in closer now to see this. Um, and then on the next column, we're going to convert those to radians. And so that's what we're going to do here. Put a little arrow up there. Um, and this is quite simply, if you look into that cell, that is the radians of whatever the degrees is, all right? So we convert those to radians. And then what we want is the sine of the radians. And so in the next column, you see we have the sine of whatever is in the radians column. And in the next column over, um, you can see that we've got uh, the cosine. So these are two important columns. Again, I'm not really going over the whole meaning of this. Um, took me a while to figure it out. Some of you are handy at this, no problem. Uh, but what I want to point out is that what we're going to do is down here at the bottom, we're going to take the mean cosine and the mean of the sine. So that means you take in the mean of this group of data here yep, and the mean of this group of data here, and that number goes right there. All right? And so if I were to select that, you would see that I have indeed... Um, I'm trying to click on stuff. It doesn't look like I can click on anything just yet um, because I have to get out of my draw function. That's what it is. Well, anyway, I'm going to move on through here. Um, 
staying in my draw function. So after I get those two numbers, what I need to do is the old pile, it's like a Pythagorean theorem sort of thing. What I need is x squared plus y squared square root. And so that is going to be equal to r. And that's how we did this. So what you see me doing is squaring here. We square this column. And then we square what's in the next column. And then took the square root. So if I highlight that, it won't let me do it because I've drawn on it now. But you would see that in that particular cell, I have um, the R cell is the, is the square root of the Y squared plus the X squared. Right, and that's the, the square of the mean and the square of the cosine. Okay, blah, blah. Well, let's move on. Down here at the bottom, we're going to move to the cosine function here. You'll notice uh, here we're at cosine A bar. Now, to get that, all we do is take the average of the X column, which is this mean value right here. Oops, try the right column. Oops, that's the Y column. Okay, average of the x column here, and put it over the r value. Again, that's the r value that we calculated, 0.82. And so we can see that formula there at the top, f38 over f40. And then we do the same thing here for the, the y values. And these two values are, are in our equation that we need. What we're going to do is we're going to take the inverse tangent of the ratio of those, so that looks right here. It's written as a tangent, e43 over 42. So you got to make sure you get the cosine, sine, the x, and the y, get the order correct. All right, if you look back up here, you remember that this cosine column is the x's, and, the, and that's right here, and the y column is the sines. Okay, so then we're going to work on down. We're almost done. Um, the, we're going to then convert that answer here to degrees. To do that we use the degrees function, degrees of what was in 44 there, and um, takes it back from radians into degrees, and then we're going to take the absolute value, that's ABS of the number, and that means we're going to drop the sign. Now we check the list of rules. We've got our degrees, we're going to find out what quadrant we're in, and um, depending on the quadrant um, there are different rules, and here you can look at this nice image here. Um, this is the quadrant if the sine is positive. In our case, we have, a, we have this case right here where the sine is positive, cosine is negative. How do I check it? I go to my column. Well, I could go anywhere. I could go here, right, right in here. I can look at these numbers right there, and I have the cosine one is negative and the sine one is positive. I can also look back up at my original uh, columns and see that my cosine column is negative and my, my uh, um, sine column is positive, so I can see it there. Either way, but this tells you which of these quadrants that you're in on the circle. And to, then you take the degrees that you have and you follow this little formula. So in ours is sine positive, cosine negative. The mean angle you're looking for then is 180 minus whatever is your theta. In our case, our theta is 81. So if I took right down here at the bottom, I took 180 minus the absolute value, which is which, which is this cell here. So I just subtracted 180 and I got 98.98. And that is the number of degrees that is the average of, of all my data points. So uh, this is awesome. This is the easiest way to calculate this, trust me.